Good morning, everyone. So good to take off the mask and speak without the mask. But it's necessary to continue wearing in it because to stop spreading the virus. It's a, it's a need. So thank you so much to the elder for the invitation, to the visitor, welcome to the house of the Lord. Always is a honor for me and privilege to come here at prom and to prepare a lesson and to try to do my best for you and for the Lord. It's a honor and a pleasure. The lesson for this morning, the title of the lesson, of my lesson of this morning is Serving God in the Last Day. Thanks for the scripture reading. And we are going to be learning this morning a good lesson that the Apostle Peter teaches us, not only us, but the Christians of the first century. The Apostle Peter wrote his first letter approximately in the year 66 of the first century. And he wrote advising these Christians. And also the writer of the book of Hebrews wrote the following, I, I don't see this, I don't have, I don't see the screen right here. I have to be seen over there. And the writer of the, of the book of Hebrews that probably was the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, he wrote the following in Hebrews chapter 1 in the verse 2, the Apostle uh, Paul, we assume that was the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul said, he mentioned about the last, also the last, last time, or last days. And, and the Apostle Paul, if, if it was the Apostle Paul, we're going to assume that was the Apostle Paul, or no matter who was, but was a believer, was a servant of God, was a Christian, who wrote this book, the book of Hebrews. And the writer said, in these last days, has spoken about the, about the Father, or God the Father, has spoken to us, to the Christians, in his son, talking about Jesus Christ, whom he appointed heir of all things, to whom also he made the world, in others, Bertrand said, the universe, or the creation. And again, we see it in these last days, this refer to the Christian age. Last days. Brothers and sisters, we are living in the last days. We are living in the Christian age. Let me tell you very quick uh, 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 a short story when I was a child. My mother was visiting the church frequently almost every day. He was in the building, a worshiping the Lord. And she, I saw her, I remember I saw her reading the Bible. When you become older and older, I told her, Mom, I don't see you now reading the Bible too much. But I remember when I was a child that almost you every day was reading the Bible. That was so good. And, but the story that I want to share with you this morning is the following. That she, I remember that she told me we are living in the last days. And this world is going to perish. And I told to my mom, no, no, don't tell me about that. I don't want to hear about that. I, I am only a child right now. I want to continue playing with my friends. And I, I love, I love this place. I love this community. I love the world. And she told me it's going to be a new world. And I, and I, I thought, a new world? So God is going to create a new earth again? A new planet again? And she told me it's going to be much better than this. And I respond here, much better than this? It's not possible. This is beautiful. 
And he told me it's going to be much better than this, but not everybody is going to air that new place. You have to have a good attitude of obedience to God if you want to get in that new place. And I was so sad and confused. And I, I, I start crying, but you know what? That words are ringing in my head every day. I grew up with fearing God. I became a teenager. I didn't continue believing too much on God, to be honest with you. And then, a couple of years later, when I was about 17 years old, I came back to the Lord. The Lord told me through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. By now, I understand the, the words of my mom. That she told me, we are living in the last days. In the last days, brothers and sisters, we must serve God with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our strengths. We're going to be learning this morning a good lesson that the Apostle Peter teaches us. And the lesson is, number one, if we believe that we live in the last day, we should live with an attitude, a good attitude of commitment. Number one, attitude of commitment. Number two, with a good attitude of wisdom. We must be so wise to live in this world that is full of evil and sins. And number three, we must, the Apostle Peter said, that we must live with an attitude of prayer. We must be praying without ceasing every moment. And number four, we must live with an attitude of love. That's the lesson that we're going to be learning this morning. The Christian, the disciple of Jesus Christ, the believer, to live with an attitude of commitment. Every beginning of every year, we said, or we start asking ourselves or asking to another person, what is going to be your resolution for this year? And we start to make a list. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go to the gym. A brother might say, I, I don't like to go to the gym because I make ugly faces. But others said, I'm going to go to the gym. That's one of my resolutions. I'm going to start going to the gym. And my son Joshua invited me the first time a couple of days ago. Oh, next day, brothers and sisters, all my muscles were hurt. <laughs> But we are still making resolutions. But if we are living in the last day, we should live with an attitude of commitment with the Lord. What is the commitment with the Lord for this 2023? The Apostle Peter wrote, Therefore Christ suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who casts sulfur in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of man, but for the will of God. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Peter said, Peter is advising us. He's writing to us. Christ suffered for us in the flesh. Every one of us know that. Brother Ryan was leading the Lord's Supper right now. And he mentioned he suffered. He went to the cross. He took up the cross and went to the Calvary. And Peter is repeating. He's reminding that to the Christian. Christ suffered for us in the flesh. He became a man. He took the human form 
and he among and he lived among the men, among us, among the human beings. And the commitment that God is requiring from us is no greater than the commitment that God asked to his son. It's no greater. We're giving excuses sometimes. Oh, it's so hard. We know that it's hard. But the commitment that God is requiring or call us is no greater than the commitment that he gave or he asked to his beloved son. In heaven, they plan the redemption of the humanity. It was a plan of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Son, the Son, came down to die for us. That was his commitment. The commitment of Jesus Christ. In these last days, we are living in the last days. We need to have the, uh, a commitment to God that will endure through great struggles. It doesn't matter if we're going to have a struggle, but we have to have a commitment. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. Ready for that. And Jesus communicated this idea when Jesus said, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Brother Mai was teaching last Sunday about born servants. We are born servants. We sign up a contract. When we decide to obey Jesus Christ. Now we are property of Jesus Christ. But now we must do or we should do a commitment. And Jesus said, take, deny you, yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Not Jesus Christ. He already fulfilled his commitment. But now he's saying, now is our, our turn. Now is our time to take our own cross and follow him. Jesus never said that was easy. The Christian life was easy. He always said, for yourself, be brave. But the reward Let's keep in mind this one. The, re the reward is gre greater than the sacrifice. Amen to that? It's greater. If we think that it's greater, we're going to continue following Jesus Christ. And then the Apostle Peter said, I'm yourself with the same mind. The mind of Christ. He suffered for us. And Peter continues saying, arm yourself with the same mind. The mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? Fulfill his commitment with his father. Let's arm also with the same mind. Or mentality must be brothers and sisters every day. I'm gonna be an imitator of the song of God. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do my best to have the mind of Christ. He was tempted in everything. He suffered since he was born. He was born in poverty. Now we see that the rich people is prepping a palace for the new baby. We see that we are celebrating baby showers. I'm not saying that it's, not, it's incorrect. 
Why say the difference between Jesus and us? He suffered for us in the flesh. In other words, he paid a debt for us to the Father. A debt impossible for us to pay. And Peter is saying, arm yourself with the same mind. I got a good friend in, in WhatsApp. And he's posting almost twice in a week. Something, write it down. And he posts a picture, a message in, 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 in his page. I am armed with God in my gun. That's what, no, that's what Peter is saying. Peter is saying, arm yourself with the same mind, same mind of Jesus Christ. In other words, prepare yourself. Be a good imitator of Jesus Christ. And Peter, in other words, is talking, arm yourself for the battle. Every day we have a battle. We are going to the battle every day. But you know what? The sad part of this one, we're going to the battle almost every day. But many of us are defeated in our battle against sin. Why? Have you wondered why we are defeated in the battle? We are going almost every day to battle. And most of us are defeated in or daily battle against sin. Why? Because we refuse sacrifice anything in the battle. We only want victory. It, it comes easily to us. Jesus called us to have the kind of attitude that good sacrifice in the battle against sin. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 and verse 30, he said, If your right eyes makes you stumble. He's talking about the sacrifice. Hear it out and throw it for you. If your right hand makes you stumble, the same thing, did it out and throw it for you. It's preferable to go heaven having only one eye or only one arm than to go to hell having the whole members of the body. Jesus is talking about sacrifices. The eye is an important member of the body. Right hand, we got two hands. Probably if you are a carpenter, you are working good in the computer, you are using your both hands. Both hands. But are you right hand or are you left hand? If you are right hand, you are going to be a stronger or faster probably with your right hand. In the gym, my son Joshua saw me when I was doing the exercise and he told me that. Make it this exercise 12 times. But you think that you are so tired, just reduce the amount. Just do it 10 times. And, and I, I decided to go always 12, 12 times. But he saw me in one of the last exercises. He saw me and told me that. How many times you did this exercise? And I respond here, 12. Okay, that's good. But I saw that your left hand was weak. Last time. And your right hand was stronger. Because I'm right hand. And my right hand is stronger than my left hand. I walk in painting and I use both hands to use my breath and to use the right. But honestly, I'm faster with this one because I'm right hand. And I'm stronger with this one because I'm right hand. 
So Jesus is making reference about this. Important members of the body. Important things in your life that, that you don't want sacrifice. But those important things are leaving you to destroy your life and to destroy your relationship with the creator. So that's the reason that we are the feet in the battle because brothers and sisters, to be honest, we don't want to make sacrifices. We want victory easy. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is taking care of me, but we don't want to do anything. The Lord is commanding to us to make a commitment to make sacrifices, to force or serve, to worship him in his spirit and in truth, to loud our voices, to glorify him, to say amen, to say hallelujah to him, to give all the glory to him. He's asking for that. But we don't want to do sacrifices. We want to go heaven, but we don't want to do sacrifices. I want to be in a good physical condition. I have to start running. It's healthy. Doing exercise. You want to know about the Bible? So read the Bible. Study in the Bible. Ask to other brothers and sisters. Ask to the Lord for wisdom, for knowledge. We have to sacrifice time. And Peter said, Jesus no longer should live the rest of his time. And the lesson for us, Jesus lived in this earth 33 years. For the Jewish people, the Jewish people, a man of 30 years old, is considered a young man. He was so young when he passed away. He only lived on this earth 33 years old. But Peter said he didn't live the rest of his time in sin. He lived the rest of his time glorifying his father. Sometimes we we are asking ourselves or asking to the Lord, give me a long life. What for? What for do we want a long life? To glorify God or to live yours a life of pleasure? It doesn't matter if we live a long or a short life. The thing that matter is the kind of life that we live on this earth. If we live 100 years, and there were 100 years not serving God, it was a waste of time. Jesus lived only 33 years, and he glorified his father in the flesh. And the lesson for us is the following that Peter teaches us. First, no longer should we live in sin. Let's have the same mind of Jesus Christ. He's our greatest example. No longer should we live in sin. And we should answer every temptation and sinful impulse with the reply, no longer. No longer. You said, brother, it's no easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. But if we are tempted, I'm also tempted. Every, every one of us is tempted for the evil one. But also we are tempted, yes, sir, for our own desires. Desires in our heart and desires in our mind. And remember, Sacrifices in your right hand is a stand for you. Cut it off. Your right eye, do the same thing. 
we must do sacrifices. But Peter is, teaches us. We, we should respond, no longer. And second, Peter teaches us, we should carefully consider how to live the rest of our time. Jesus lived the rest of his time glorifying his father. We should consider how to live the rest of our time. We are living in the last days, in the last time. And we, con we must continue serving and consider how to live the rest of our time. And number two, we live in the last time and we should live with an attitude of wisdom. This is so important. But we have spent enough of our past life, lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. In other words, the will of the pagans. The pagans. The will of people without God. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to this, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flaw or dissipation. Speaking evil of you, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are there, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. First Peter chapter 4, verse 3 and verse 6. Peter says that we should live in this last day serving the Father, serving God with an attitude of wisdom. It's not wise to go drinking parties. We got many friends. Latin friends, many Latin friends. And sometimes they invite to us, my wife and my family, to parties. And I told Charles about this. I remember I mentioned to Charles about that. And I told Brother Charles, I don't think it's wise that we continue attending to do or responding to those invitations because those invitations are most of the time drinking parties, drinking alcohol. And I told uh, um, Paul Charles, last time when I went, when we attend, they sat in, 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 the, in the table and there was another people over there. And the guy that was in charge of the party was giving drinks and offering beers to, to all the visitors. And he offered me, and I, I respond, no, I don't drink alcohol. But anyway, he put a beer close to me, almost a throw on me. And I thought, oh my Lord, somebody saw this and take a picture, gonna say, Carlos was drinking alcohol. I thought to my wife, this is not wise. Honestly, these are drinking parties, alcohol everywhere. It's only an excuse to call. A party, but honestly, it's a drinking party. Celebrating just the alcohol. We have to be, we must to be wise for that. Peter said, but well, we are spent enough. Oh, let me go, let me go forward. Back. All right, Peter said, we, have, we haven't spent enough time living like the Gentiles, and we must be careful because we're going to give account to God of everything that we are doing. And Peter mentioned right here a list of sin 
But only I only wrote one. We don't have too much time to explain about all of them, but I only wrote, wrote one. Lewdness is the number one in Peter's list. Why the number one? Because this denotes excesses of all kinds of evil. In other words, if somebody is willing to practice this thing, is willing to continue doing other things. To lie, to kill, and my concept of a robber when get to your house is the following. Let me share it with you. When a robber enters to your house, he's not only entered to rob, he's prepared also to kill. If the owner of the house opposed, he's going to kill him. He's also a robber and a murderer. Number one in the list, no morality for this. Do not exist of all kinds of evils. And Peter said, you are not doing that anymore. You are not running in that direction. You are not running in that way. That's, that was enough. Sadly, sadly, brothers and sisters, Many of us think that we have no strength if not if enough time doing the will of the ungodly. Many of us we are seeing or we are thinking, I, I need to continue practicing or doing a little more of the work before to make a commitment with the Lord. Just a little more. They want to experience more of the work. Before they make a full commitment to godliness. Just, just a little more, Brother Carlos, or Brother Derek, or Brother Mike, or whatever they just. I'm weak. I'm human. This is a tragic mistake that takes a path, brothers and sisters, that leads away from eternal life. We are living in the last days. In Christian age. And one more. The third commitment is the following. Christian should live with an attitude of serious prayer. Peter said, but the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious. And watchful in your prayers. The end of all things. Peter wrote this letter in the year 66 of the first century. It's a hand. It's near. Almost 2,000 years ago. He wrote this letter. And he's saying that the end of all things is a hand. Peter is talking about the end of the world. Peter is making reference to the second coming of Jesus Christ. 43 years before, or 30 years before that Peter wrote this letter, Jesus said, repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's near. And the prophet John the baptizer repeated the saying, repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Peter is using the same expression now. 43 years later, the end of all things is at hand, it's near. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. In other words, Peter is trying to say, be serious, praying, giving thanks to God. Brothers and sisters, when we read the Bible, God talks to us. Every time that we are reading the Bible, the Lord is talking to us through his word. But when we pray, we talk to God. That's why Peter is saying, 
that our attitude must be or should be a serious attitude of prayer. Or things are again, be serious in your prayer, Peter said. Be serious giving thanksgiving. Every moment, a home, enter to your room, close the door, go on your knees or in the position that you want, and start giving thanks to the Lord. Go outside. Sometimes when we go to the restaurant, there's a lot of noise. Music, people talking, table very close, and people in conversation. The thing that I do, I want to continue giving thanks to my Lord for the meals. I, I tell to my family sometimes, let's do it very quick. I can do, I can pray a long prayer. But Heavenly Father, thanks so much for this meal. We appreciate this one. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I work, continue praying. I am in the top of the ladder, I'm praying. On a skirt, it's a risky job. Lord, help me. Be with me. Wherever you are, you're sleeping, you are in your bed. Let's pray to the Lord. That's what Peter is saying. Be serious in your prayers. Our attitude must be or should be serious in our prayers. Giving thanks always. We, we celebrate right here in America. Thanksgiving Day. It's a beautiful day. We are in family. Giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to the Lord for the freedom that we have in this country. That's so beautiful. But let's give thanks to the Lord without ceasing. Always. Petitions. Let's be serious in our petition. Asking and asking and asking to the Lord. But let's don't forget to say at the end of our prayer, you will be done. Because the commitment is, or attitude is, to pray. But the Lord is going to respond, yes, no, or wait. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan demanded permission to save you lie with. In Job, we read the same thing. Satan demanded permission to the Father, to the Lord God, to tempt or to bother Job. He's demanded permission. And the Lord God allowed him to tempt us. God don't tempt nobody. The devil is tempting everybody. But Jesus said to Peter, but I have prayed to my father that your faith not fail. Jesus didn't say to Peter, Oh, I pray to my father. Don't allow that the tempter tempt you. No. Jesus didn't say that to Peter. I have prayed to my father that you fail. Do your faith, excuse me. Don't fail. And you will return. I see you. Jesus always, even he saw the future of Peter. When you return, you will be strengthening your brothers. My disciples, you're going to, I have been praying, your faith, not fail, Peter, but your faith is going to fail. But you're going to repent, and you're going to be strengthening your brothers, my disciples. So why we should be serious in prayer? In prayers? Not only to stop the temptation, but to have the faith to resist the temptation. The same thing with Jesus Christ when he was in the garden. Father, Father, don't allow or allow that the cup. I don't want to drink this cup. But the answer of the Father was, you must drink it. 
There's no other way to redeem the humanity. And Jesus, in a humble attitude, he said at the end of his prayer, your will be done. So be serious in your prayers. And then, Peter said, be watchful in your prayers. This meaning in other world, watching or self, or heart or mind. And the, in other words, Peter is, is talking again about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Watching for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's keep watching, praying, because Jesus is going to come back. And like I said before, year 66, Peter is saying, Jesus is coming back. It's a hand. Well, in, in God, timetable, one year is like a day. It's totally different. Is eternal. In him there is no time, neither space. So the time it doesn't pass. Is at hand. The second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. Be watchful in your prayers. And the last one, the last advice of Peter is the following. We must live, or we should live, with an attitude of love. Before Jesus passed away, he said, a new commandment give to you, that you love one another. You love one another. Even as I, as I have loved you, that you love one another. Faith is so important. With faith, all things are possible. Hope is so important. But the Apostle Paul said, love is the greatest of these three. Love is the greater of these three. Is greater than the faith and greater than the hope. This abide till these days, but the love is the greater of these three. With faith, all things are possible, but with love, all things are easier. If we love one another, we're gonna, gonna see the mistake of my brother. I'm not gonna see the mistake of my brother. I'm gonna see the good things of my brother. I don't mean that I'm going to become blind. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to see these sins. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mistakes. Where love abounds in a fellowship of Christian, many small offenses. And even some large offenses are readily overlooked and forgotten. We are going to be willing to forget and to forgive. But, brothers and sisters, where love is lacking, every word is viewed with suspicion. Oh, this brother or this sister is insulting me. It's offending me. Conflicts abound. Every action is liable to misunderstanding. No. We are going to be seeing only wrong things. This morning, we said that we are living in the last days. If you are a visitor, you are a friend, and you are not serving to the Lord God, Yet, we invite you this morning to start or to begin serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says that we only need to be repent of our sins, confess His holy name, be baptized for the forgiveness and of our sins, and we shall be starting a new life in Jesus Christ, serving our Lord and King. Thank you so much for the attention, brothers and sisters, and the lesson is yours. It is convenient for you. If you need some assistance, you can come forward and let the elders know. When you, come, you, you have decided to follow Jesus Christ, just let us know.